All right, ladies and gentlemen, to paraphrase the most electrifying man in all of entertainment, The Rock, finally, the UFC has come back home to Las Vegas, Nevada, and their return to the fight hub of the world goes down tomorrow night at the UFC Apex. Hello there, everyone. Welcome to the UFC on ESPN9 preview show on MMAfighting.com. My name is Mike Heck, broadcasting from my soon-to-be old office space here in Western Massachusetts, virtually alongside Jose Youngs, who is our boots on the ground in Las Vegas. Jose, good to see you, man. My first question for you before we start talking empty arena face punching, you have covered a lot of events throughout your career in Las Vegas. You've been in the middle of the craziness that Vegas can produce. Has it been sort of surreal and shocking being back there covering a fight week and seeing it so eerily quiet and empty? In Las Vegas, for sure. Uh, I think the three the three cards in Jacksonville definitely kind of prepared me because Jacksonville was so, not chaotic, but there were so many questions we had. And I think if I didn't do those three shows, I wouldn't have been, I don't think I would have been prepared. I mean, even a few media that weren't in Jacksonville messaged me. They were like, what can we expect from in Las Vegas? I'm like, well, I wish I could tell you uh, because I don't know what it's going to be like in Las Vegas. It's, of course, at the UFC Apex where I'm outside the UFC Apex right now. Uh, it's like 100 degrees. I'm sitting in a tent. So if I melt, you know why. But uh, it was a little weird being in the and there being so few media there. Uh, there was only a select few media that were even allowed to, to watch the official way. And so uh, it's, I, I don't know if it's surreal, but it's definitely, it, it's odd. It's, it's not as odd as Jacksonville was, but it's, I don't know what to make of it yet. I'll know more on fight night. Well, what will not be empty is a 25-foot octagon inside the UFC Apex tomorrow night, which will include a fascinating main event at 170 pounds as the former champion Tyron Woodley returns to action for the first time in over a year since losing the the, the title to Kamara Usman at UFC 235. He's going to take on the surging Gilbert Durino Burns. The fight is interesting for a number of reasons, Jose, but the, the big questions that will hopefully be answered are, one, is Gilbert Burns the real deal? Can he be a guy who can fight for a world title in the next year or so? Or is this newly focused Tyron Woodley 2.0 going to take that step forward to reclaiming his throne? What are your thoughts on this big welterweight headliner for tomorrow night? Well, I don't know if it's Tyron Woodley 2.0. I know Tyron Woodley says he's focused in this and that, but again, I don't know. Uh, Tyron Woodley himself said that like he was went to a state of depression after watching after losing uh, his title to Kamara Usman said he hasn't really watched it and it took a while to get out of that funk. Uh, since then, he's had two fights booked that both of them have fallen apart. The Robbie Lawler uh, rematch, of course, from Minneapolis. Then he was supposed to fight uh, Leon Edwards in London. Both of those fights fell out. So not like Tyron Woodley wasn't trying to fight. It's the fact that his the, the fights just weren't materializing or he got hurt or the coronavirus thing happened. So uh, I'm curious if the Tyron Woodley we, we were supposed to see against Robbie Lawler in Minneapolis or against Leon Edwards in London if this is a blessing in disguise where he's had time to reprocess and refocus or uh, if he's if he's just over it at this point because uh, Leon Edwards uh, it, it might not be as vocal as, as uh, Gilbert Burns is on social media but he's a higher ranked opponent uh, he's on a longer win streak and of course Robbie Lawler is the, is the bigger name of all those three so you have to wonder uh, how focused Tyne Woodley is uh, going into his, this this main event against Gilbert Burns who let's not forget was a lightweight uh, got beat pretty badly uh, by Dan Hooker who who, the, who then forced Gilbert back up to welterweight after that beating so uh, I don't know in this fight. Uh, Gilbert Burns definitely looks like a welterweight. He definitely should not have been a lightweight uh, after seeing him stay next to Tyron Woodley. Uh, but there's a lot of questions I have uh, that I, I can only get the answers to after watching Tyron Woodley fight on Saturday night in Las Vegas. Yeah, Burns is a really interesting opponent for Tyron. One, because like you said, he's surging. He's he's on this long winning streak. He's already fought under these conditions before. Again, when he fought Damian Maya on that Brasilia card. So he's he's looking really good right now. And Tyron Willie, there's a lot of questions to be answered. And, you know, we, we hate to fantasy matchmake before these fights even happen, Jose. But Gilbert Burns, with a win or a loss, that dude's going to fight anybody. It doesn't really matter. But if he wins, he'll certainly be looking for a big one. But Tyron Woodley is a really interesting one here if he's victorious because he'll certainly want a title shot. But I want to get your thoughts on this. I don't know, A, if there will be a market for that fight because of the dominance Usman showed in that title fight. B, how long Tyron is willing to wait to get back. And C, why is the actual answer a fight with Colby Covington? <laughs> uh, the answer is the Colby Covington fight, or if they want to rebook the Leon Edward fight uh, for Fight Island, if they're really if they're really looking for fights that are, that are that are, that will draw attention to Fight Island, maybe they want to rebook uh, Tyron Woodley versus Leon Edwards, or they, but Tyron Woodley Colby Covington makes a lot of sense. There's the history there, uh, but then again, it's it's really hard to fantasy match make a because there's a, there's a few factors. Fight hasn't happened. 
Uh, the champion still doesn't have a fight. The number one contender still doesn't have a fight in Jorge Masvidal. And Colby Covington still doesn't have a fight. So for all we know, the winner of this fight could fight one of those guys. Like I don't think it's going to happen. But again, there's questions of the 170 pound division that uh, there needs to be other dominoes need to fall before we can start deciding who's going to fight who. And the first one is on, is is what after they fight Saturday. Because again, like I say this all the time, it's nice to look at look 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 past a fight. Like oh, if he wins, so on and so forth. What if this is just a war, like a Lawler McDonald war? And both of them get six month suspensions, or it's a draw. Like we saw Ty Tyron Woodley fight to a draw against Stephen Thompson. Like it's hard to look past fights for me anymore, considering uh, what could happen uh, on, on 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 Saturday night. I agree with you on that one. Co-main event, we have Bogoy Ivanov taking on Augusto Sakai. Ivanov coming off a close split decision loss to Derek Lewis at UFC 244. And Sakai has just quietly flown up this heavyweight division. He's won five in a row. He had the, the finish on the Contender Series. Three wins in the UFC already. A couple of big, powerful dudes getting ready to throw down tomorrow night inside that apex. This is a big one for both guys, is it not? Yeah, this is a huge one. I, actually, that Bogoy Ivanov, uh, Derek Lewis fight was – it's. The, the the fact that people don't talk about that enough that fight was on the New York City card so it's kind of buried by a lot of other great fights but I would hold that fight up against a lot of the fights on that card it wasn't the worst fight by any means a lot of people actually think not a lot but uh, Derek Lewis got the win but people were like I wouldn't be surprised if the judges give it to Blagoy Ivanov let's not forget Bla Blagoy Ivanov has been stabbed in the back I don't know if you've heard that story once or twice so <laughs> this man isn't afraid of anything uh, he's fought uh, for someone who came from World Series of Fighting over to the UFC he's already fought a lot of the big names at heavyweight like his debut against Junior Dos Santos he obviously was not 100% has the win over Ben Rothwell too so uh, I clearly favor Ivanov for the fact that if, veteran experience has fought a lot of the big names already and and hasn't even to, to say he's looked out of place it would be he hasn't his loss to junior santos he was basically fighting on one leg because uh, he didn't want to pull out of his debut his, his coach said that himself so uh, i favor ivanov but it's heavyweight like he could win four two rounds in four minutes and 59 seconds and all it takes is one punch to turn the lights out so uh i think Corey sanhagen said something similar when we had him on the a side so uh, uh yeah heavyweight division is a coin flip but i, I favor black yeah ivanov obviously wants to bounce back after that fight with lewis that was a three-round war and sakai can can really get himself into a into a big fight situation with the victory over an established veteran like Blagoy, but this is a really interesting card from top to bottom. Like a lot of casual fans will look at it from the beginning to, to, to the main event and say it's really top heavy, but there's, there's some really fascinating ones, including in the women's divisions. We got Mackenzie Dern looking to bounce back against Hannah Cyphers. We have Caitlin Chukagin, who's going to face the sister of the women's flyweight champion, Valentina Shevchenko, who Chukagin fought in her last fight and was finished. going to take on Antonina Shevchenko. Both fights, Jose, are intriguing in their own ways, but which one of these two women's fights draws your interest more, and why? Well, I'm gonna say I'm gonna I'm gonna correct you right there. To our own Alex Savis would be uh, pulling her hair out when she hears that they're not women fights; they're just fights. You don't need to, you know, you know what I mean. Um, as <laughs> as people roll their eyes in the in the in in the media tent right now, I'm just looking out for Alex's looking out for Alex's back. But uh, I selfishly, uh, I love watching Hannah Cyphers fight. I was at her UFC debut in Denver. I've interviewed her at numerous media days, and every time she she interviews with me, she's like, "I'm sorry, I'm getting better." She's by far one of the quietest fighters uh, you'll you, you'll ever. Run, uh, interact with a great fighter uh, could probably be an atom weight uh, if the UFC had an atom weight division but uh, I thoroughly enjoy uh, interviewing her and getting to know her a little more throughout her journey and then Mackenzie Dern is obviously one of the most popular fighters in the division made weight I know she had issues in the past but she's made weight twice uh, first first straw weight what one of the most decorated grapplers in the UFC not even just the 150 pound division just the UFC in general so uh, super interested in that fight and obviously I don't think it has any sort of title implication whatsoever but it's just it's a fun fight against two kind of clashing personalities Mackenzie Dern's very uh, very out there on social media and Hannah Cyphers is to call herself an introvert to call her an introvert would be an understatement statement. Uh, and then uh, uh, Kalin Chukagin and Antonina Shevchenko. Uh, I'm also really excited for uh, Kalin Chukagin. I was at her her loss to Valentina uh, Shevchenko in February. Uh, that was in Houston. Uh, she's lost to Roxanne Modifari, but Roxanne Modifari is on this run that's probably one of the better of her career. She's coming off that big win over Macy Barber. So I don't think there's anything to hold your head down by coming up short to Roxanne Modifari at this point. Uh, Interesting that it's on the prelims. Interesting that uh, Catlin is trying to f is fighting someone so much lower ranked than her, especially coming off of a, uh, a title fight. But I think she said it. She put it 
perfectly during virtual media day. Like a lot of people in the, the flyweight division have either fought each other and someone at some point you just got to fight someone new just to get the division rolling. Uh, so I, I think the Cynthia Calvillo kind of injecting herself into the into the weight class where she fights Jessica I. Maybe not the best main event, but she also said it's, it's good for the division. I agree. It's good for the division to get new names. So uh, I don't know which one I'm more drives my interest more. I like watching Hannah Cypher's fight. Mackenzie Dern's always fun to watch on the ground. But then Count Keegan, Anthony Tuchenko probably has more at stakes in terms of a title fight. But I doubt Anthony will want to fight her sister anytime soon. Yeah, both are very interesting fights. Both fights, not women's fights, fights in general. Just to correct myself, I apologize to anyone who was offended by that. But uh Mackenzie yeah, Dern. I'm just, giving, I'm just giving. I'm just giving. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> but uh, you know, Mackenzie Dern was one of the big stories heading into weigh-ins. Will she make weight? I, I bet some sites maybe even were pre-writing some articles. But uh, she made the, she made weight. She looked great. But uh, in case you were not aware, there was one hiccup on the scales. Brock Weaver missed. Uh, weight by a pound and a half. And I think you know what question that's going to lead to, Jose. You know me well enough at this point. What is that under-the-radar fight that could steal the show tomorrow night, in your humble opinion? Well, I think that's the one. Like, if I'm going to circle, I'm like, I look at this, I'm like, I bet Mike Heck likes this fight. And sure enough, that was the one where it was like, Roberts and Weaver is a great fight. Too bad Weaver uh, missed weight. Came in in his in his headdress per usual. Uh, but so, can't, can't really say, when you miss weight, you can't really say anything. So, Roosevelt Roberts was obviously uh, jawing at him the whole time. You just kind of have to, to to take it at that point. And, and Weaver did. So, obviously, outside of the, the missed weight, I really like that fight. I'm also very really into the Casey Kenny fight. Uh, Casey Kenny is obviously an Arizona, uh, Arizona native, so uh, I always like watching him, especially coming off his uh, his, his loss. Uh, and he he beat, he has the win over Ray Borg, so I'm always uh, fascinated by a Casey Kenny fight. So yeah, there's, there's, there's it's, again, it's not the most stacked card, but it's it's a card. It's a fight night card. There's a lot of, uh, uh, not title fight implications, but a lot of fighters that are looking to make the next step. Like even we're talking about Ivanov versus Sakai in the co-main event, like the winner of that could probably get in the top 10. Uh, and that's important. Like anyone in the heavyweight divisions, uh, string a few fight wins together, you can fight for a title. So uh, not a lot of title implications outside of like a handful of fights, but just important fights, I should say, for the division. Yeah, I think the Roberts Weaver stare down jumped that fight up a little bit in terms of interest and people are going to want to see how that thing plays out. But there's a couple for me, one I'm, I'm in agreement with you on, and not because I spoke to all four of these competitors heading in, but Tim Elliott versus Brandon Roy Val is going to be yeah. – just a wild fight, just absolutely bananas. If you have not watched Brandon Roy Val fight, there's I know there's some highlight reel videos on YouTube. I highly recommend you go watch it because both of these guys are very awkward. They both move forward. They both look to finish. It's going to be fun on the feet and fun on the ground. I think this is perfect matchmaking here. And also, like you said, Casey Kenny versus Lewis Smoker will be fun, not just because yeah, they're, they're great fighters. Yeah, but, but they both love this chaos like they love jumping sure. in on short notice that they've been ready to go for quite a bit of time and and now they're going to do it on short notice i love both of those fights there's a lot of there's a lot of toughies here for those who are going to be heading to the virtual betting window this weekend there's a lot of 50 mm -hmm. 50 fights in my opinion as we uh as we wrap up another preview show here on mmafighting.com i'm starting to sweat i know you're sweating jose so make sure you stick with us all night long tomorrow night during the event we'll have all your results recaps post-fight interviews and more Jose, cool off. Get some rest, my man. For Jose Youngs, I am Mike Keck. Thank you very much for watching, and we will see you tomorrow night.